Hi, welcome to our next tutorial. In this one we're going to talk about timers and scoring. So, I've already got a world started here. Um, it's called Apple Saucer. So we'll load that up. And what we have, simple square little piece of world with the saucer flying around, apparently random. Um, so, get back into edit mode with the escape key. And here we are. Now you can see that there's already a path that I put into place, and that's what the saucer is following. If we click on the object edit and look at the saucer's programming, you can see that he's moving on a path, and that's all he does. Um, paths are a really nice way of controlling where the programmed characters move. So if you're doing a Space Invaders type game or anything where you need somebody to follow a path, this is your solution. What we're going to do first is we're going to have the saucer, um, let's say every five seconds, create and drop an apple. So down in the next line we can use the timer for this. And we'll say timer, and then we have to tell it how many seconds to wait. And I'll, I said five seconds, so we'll choose five. And at the end of that five seconds what we want to do over in actions, there's the create, and we will create an apple. And let's go ahead and make it red, just because red apples are nice. So now we can go back out of the editor with the escape, press the run button, the saucer goes back into its flying around the path, and every five seconds it creates and drops an apple. Okay, so now we do that. Let's go ahead and add another character that chases down these apples and gets points every time he eats one of the apples. So, escape to get back into the editor. I'll pick the object tool and I will create a cycle because it looks a lot like the scooter I ride. So, right click on the character, bring into programming. What we want to say is when he sees an apple, We want him to move toward it, and when he gets to the apple, he's going to bump into it. So when he bumps into the apple, we want him to eat it. Now we also want a way to keep track of how many apples he's eaten and give him some score. So we can also say, well, when he bumps into the apple, we'll use under the game menus, there's a plus score. We'll say score, add one point, and the scores are color-coded, so we'll say to the red score. Now, one thing that you notice here is that we're doing this test to see, oh, did he bump an apple, then eat it? Did he bump an apple, then score one point? We're doing the same thing twice. Um, Kodu allows you to kind of do a bit of a shortcut here, where I can take this row, and if I move it to the right, then it becomes a child to this other row, and I can actually delete this test. And this will only happen when this actually becomes true. So when he bumps the apple, he will eat it, and he will score one point. So it's a nice little shortcut, and it makes some other more advanced programming things a lot easier to do. But just keep that in mind. So let's escape to get out of here, and run the game. Now if you'll notice up in the upper right hand corner of the screen there's already a score of zero there in red. And he sees the apple, he chases it down, and he scores a point. He's chasing the next one down. One more point. And he's just sitting there because he doesn't see any apples. Oh, there he does. So Let's go back out, and one thing I forgot to add, which we saw in the previous tutorial, was that if he doesn't see anything, we want him to just move, wander. And that way, he won't get stuck in any corners because he's facing away from the apples. Now, um, to make this a little more interesting, let's say that we sometimes we want the saucer to drop green apples and green apples are poisonous, so those take away from your score. So let's see what we need to add for that. So first of all, we go to the saucer, right-click, choose program, and for that we'll say we want it to be maybe between 10 and 20 seconds that the saucer creates a green apple. 
So here we take the timer. Now, in this case, he's doing it exactly every five seconds, but we want to have this kind of randomness, a little bit of variability. Now, to get from 10 to 20, what we can do, say, 10 seconds, random, 10 seconds. What this is going to do is going to say the random means whatever's to the right of it goes from 0 to 10 seconds, and this is added to the existing 10 seconds. So what we end up with is between 10 and 20 seconds. And here we want to create another apple, but in this case we want to create one that's green. And then in our cycle, we can go program him and say, well, we want him to avoid the green apple. So if we see a green apple, we want him to move to avoid it. And if he happens to actually bump into it, we still want him to eat it. But in this case, instead of adding to a score, we're going to subtract from the score. So we're going to say subtract, and we'll say the worth minus 5 points. Now, one other thing I need to do is up here I just say see apple. So this means that he's going to go after any apple, not just the red ones. So we need to go ahead and be a little more specific there. Say when he only sees a red apple he wants to move toward it and it's going to be only red apples that cause him to get points. So now that we're done with that we go and run it and you can see that first of all the cycle immediately starts moving because of the move wander instead of sitting and waiting for the first apple to show up. And there, hey, we've got our first green apple. So far, he hasn't run into it. And, well, we can just let this go as long as you want. But what we've covered here is how you can add scoring into your game to keep track of things. You can have positive scoring, you can have negative scoring, and how you can use timers to add a little variability and to continuously create more objects in the game. So have fun.